Hi everyone, my name's Gerald. So I've got a really fun video lined up for today where we're gonna check the energy consumption of my A-liner. We're gonna look at both the 120 volt systems and the 12 volt systems, and hopefully I can get a little better understanding of the 120 volt, and if I ever have shore power, what kind of circuit that I need. Um, and also on the 12 volt systems, if ever I change batteries, uh, maybe I go for lithium ion, maybe I'll have a, a better understanding of what my power requirements and if I'm ever you know kind of off grid uh, what kind of battery I need to stay off grid for maybe a week or two weeks and so yeah let's go ahead and get started so for both the 120 volt systems and the 12 volt systems I'm basically gonna look at energy consumption using the kilowatt device that I have um, it should be okay. Um, I don't have a battery monitor and I'd really like to have that eventually so I can look at the 12 volt energy consumption, but I think the kilowatt device will give us most of the information that we need. So we're going to start off with the 120 volt system, so the big dogs in the energy usage. And um, I'm going to look first at the microwave, then I'm going to look at the heat pump, and finally I'm going to look at the fridge. Now I've got a three way fridge, so it actually does both AC, DC, and, and propane. So we'll compare how much energy consumption that each of those modes actually use. So for the baseline reading with no devices on, on my A-liner, but it plugged into shore power, um, it's reading uh, 0.35 or 0.36 amps. And so that's what we're gonna look at. And then we're gonna turn on each device and to see what the differences are. And then I'll record it. And um, I'll have a spreadsheet for you that you can look at. So you can look at each of the devices and how much power it's pulling. So the first device that we're gonna test is the microwave. And this should be 1500 watts, I think, um, at around 15, 15 amps. Um, but I'm gonna turn it on for 30 seconds. I'll have it record and I'll see you in a second. Yeah, so it looks like my microwave is pulling about um, 12.5 amps. Um, so we'll go on to the next device. So one of the things that I really dislike about the Command AC unit is the remote control that comes with it. So I'm not using it because it's just so confusing. It has a whole bunch of different buttons. It's got like a humidity control and the fan and uh, it's, there's just too many, too many buttons. Um, anyway, I'm going to turn on the power and then I'm going to turn it on um, AC mode. So let's turn that on. Get it all the way down, as low as it can go. And so it should be running the AC. I'll wait for it to um, totally start up and to blow cold air. But let's go outside and let's see what kind of um, reading that we're getting here. Oh, I just heard the compressor turn on. So it'll be interesting to see what the values are for this. Yeah, so the compressor's running and it's both blowing really cold air. And so yeah, it's pulling about seven amps, 6.95. Um, I think our baseline was up a 0.4 or so. It's pretty amazing. So it's very, very efficient and it's blowing super cold air. Um, so yeah, so that's cool. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is test the heat on the heat pump and to see how much power that pulls. Now, it's kind of warm here. It's probably 82, 83 degrees. So I'm not exactly sure the heat pump is actually going to kick on totally. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so um, I'm going to start it up and see uh, what kind of the initial draw is. And then we'll just let it run for a little bit. I'll see if I can get some hot air blowing and we'll see what kind of energy it pulls. All right. So I just heard the compressor kick on. And so, yeah, it's definitely um, using heat right now. And so it's basically pulling um, real similar. So 7.4 amps. Um, actually a little bit more than what the uh, AC did. And so I think the manual is actually a little wrong. Um, so the manual says that the AC is at 8.8 .8 amps and the heat is at 7.2 amps. And so, yeah, it might be a little bit off. Um, but yeah, both of them don't pull all that much. And so for sure, um, you're going to be able to run that heat pump just on a regular 15 amp circuit without any problems at all. So that's really good. So the next thing we're going to test is the refrigerator. So we're going to go do it first in 120 volt mo mode, and then we're going to go off of DC to see how much it pulls, and then we're going to go off of propane and test that as well. So that'll be really interesting. All right, so I got the fridge on and 
Um, got it on AC mode and it's pulling um, 1.75 amps. Now it's, it was totally hot, so it's all, you know, just cooling down right now. And so it's running probably full, full tilt. Um, I do actually have it on three. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and switch it to five and see what difference that makes. So let's check that out. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it onto the coldest setting on AC mode. Okay, and um, let's see, I think it was at 1.75 is what I said. Let's see what it looks like now. Yeah, so it's still at 1.75, so maybe it just takes a little while for it to register and for it to kick on that colder mode. I'm not exactly sure. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and switch it to DC mode, um, which is the 12 volt mode, and so it should be running off the battery at this point. I would imagine it's gonna pull the same amount of apps when it's doing that, but we'll see. Yeah, so interestingly, when you switch it to DC mode, the little fan turns on. Um, not exactly sure what's up with that and why it does that. Hmm. Okay, let's see what it did um, to, the, um, to the amps. So that is just so interesting. So I switched it to DC mode, and so it's pulling 3.7 amps instead of 1.7 amps. Maybe it's just not as efficient, so it pulls more, more energy? I, I don't know. Um, that's crazy. I'm gonna switch it back to AC just, just for shits and giggles to see what it does. <laughs> yeah, so I'm assuming you can hear that fan running in the background. So I'm gonna switch it back to AC mode. Yeah, and that fan turns off. Yeah, so as soon as I turned it back to AC mode, the um, amount of energy it was consuming as far as amp goes went down significantly. So that's really interesting. So the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check how much energy it consumes when we're doing propane. And so this should be the least amount. Um, I expected the AC and DC to be the same, but for sure the propane um, will be a lot less. So let's check that out. Yeah, and so it's reading 0.44 um, as opposed to the 1.4, I think, um, on the AC. So yeah, quite a bit less. Okay, so now we're gonna check the 12 volt systems. The 120 volt was a lot of fun and kind of interesting. Um, but the 12 volt systems, the first one we're gonna check is the furnace. That's probably the um, biggest user because it's gotta use the blower on the fan. And so that takes up a lot of energy, but let's see what, what it says um, that, it, that it's using. So one important note in regards to the 12 volt system. So my kilowatt device, it measures amps based on 120 volts. So in order to get the amps for a 12 volt system, you basically take the amps that it displays and you multiply it by 10. Um, and that will let you get a good idea on how long the device will be able to run on battery life alone on a 12 volt system. All right, so yeah, the furnace looks like it's taking, I don't know, maybe 1.1 uh, amp or so in order to run the blower on the furnace. So it's blowing hot air right now. And so it's actually a little more efficient than what they have on the manual. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna test is the Fantastic Fan. And so there's three speeds, one, two, and three. And so we'll check all three to see how much each speed pulls. Okay, so for speed one, we're at 0.61 and baseline we're at like 0.37. So we're using about 0.25 or a quarter of an amp. Okay, so for speed two now, we're at 0 0.71, 0 0.72. So basically about a tenth of an amp is basically what it went up um, from speed one. Okay, speed three is at 0 0.84, 0 0.83, so a little bit more. So you're looking at anywhere from 0 0.61 to 0.83 as far as running that fantastic fan. Okay, so next is the lights. Okay, for one LED light on, full lighting, it went up 37 to 0.49. Let's turn the second one on. Okay, so with the second light on, we're now at 0.62. So I believe this is also an LED light. So that brought it up to 0.7. And finally, this LED light here. And that didn't really do much, so we're now at 0.7. So to have all the lights on basically is 
about 0.33 amps is what we're looking at. All right, so the last thing that we're gonna test is the water pump. Now, I, this isn't really, I mean, how often is really the water pump gonna be running? But to be thorough, we're gonna test it anyway. So the water pump is running um, and it's pulling about uh, 0.83 amps or so. And I don't imagine that the water pump's gonna be running all that often when you turn on the water. Um, but yeah, that's, that's that. Okay, I'm gonna run uh, a test. Somebody basically asked me to run on the Facebook. And so they wanted to know if I ran the AC continuously and also the fridge, um, you know, what kind of usage I could expect. Um, I did explain to them that the, um, it's actually better to run the fridge off of propane, but nonetheless, I'm gonna run that. So basically, I'm, I'm gonna run the electrical appliances, um, the AC, um, and the fridge, and then I'm also gonna run the 12 volt devices. So I'm gonna run the lights and the fantastic fan exa exhausting out. And I'm gonna run that for a half hour, just, in a, just to see um, how much energy I've used. Also, the camper is like 90 degrees right now. And so I'm kind of curious if I run the AC, the heat pump, um, continuously for 30 minutes, um, what it can do to the temperature. All right, so the temperature in here is 92 degrees. And so I'm really curious with the um, cooler of the heat pump on, oh shoot, 93 degrees. Um, with the cooler of the heat pump on, um, how much that can affect temperature in 30 minutes. Oh, and with all those devices on, basically I'm pulling uh, 9.7 amps and I'm pulling 1135 watts. All right, so it's been 30 minutes, and so we've used a total of uh, 0.72 kilowatt hours. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how I can extrapolate that and determine um, how many watts that we're going to basically be using um, per day when we're camping. So I'm finished with my electrical testing and I completed my spreadsheet. So I'm going to make this available in a Google Sheet and the link will be in the description of this video. So the first thing I really wanted to determine was for the 120 volt systems and basically if I had all of the electrical systems on my A-liner on and I was at a campground that had sure power, what kind of circuit would I need? And so basically with all the devices on, um, of course, you know, I didn't add up all of the different energy sources. So, you know, all the different modes of the um, refrigerator or I didn't have the heat pump heat on as well as the furnace. But basically with all the devices on, how much amps would it pull? And it was basically about 21.9 amps or so. So for the most part, a 20 amp circuit would be able to handle probably most of my electrical requirements in a campground. Now, if you were using extra 120 volt systems, so let's say you had uh, you know, an additional microwave or uh, hair dryer or some sort of toaster oven, uh, coffee maker, those kinds of things, and you had all of those systems on plus those, um, you might need like a 30 amp circuit. But for the most part, probably a 15, 20 amp circuit would probably suit most campers needs pretty well. So the other thing I wanted to do was I wanted to look at if I was camping off grid, basically using the 12 volt systems, how long I could stay off grid for. And so I basically looked at all the 12 volt systems. I looked at how often I would be using those systems in hours per day. I also looked at kind of like whether or not it was summer or winter camping because you might use the devices a little bit differently. And then for devices that cycle on and off like your furnace or like your fridge, I also kind of gave a rough estimate on how many hours I would be using each of those devices. And so what it came down to was for summer camping, I could probably spend about two days off grid without having to recharge the battery. Um, for winter camping, it was less. So for winter camping, I could basically spend about a day off grid and really the biggest eater of those um, energy requirements was really the furnace. And so the furnace, um, I could only run that 
about four hours a day if it was to stay on the entire time. Now, of course, the furnace cycles on and off, but for the most part, probably winter camping, if I'm using the furnace quite a bit, I would probably only be able to stay off grid for one day. So I did base this on a 100 hour deep cycle marine battery. And typically with one of these batteries, with a lead acid battery, you're really only going to get about half of the amp hours that it says, uh, because you can't really draw more than 50% usage out of it. So if you are going to be doing dry camping, you're probably going to want to invest in solar so that once the sun is out, you can recharge your batteries and also maybe consider upgrading to lithium ion because they're lighter you can have more batteries um, and you can draw them down a lot more than a lead acid battery can so in regards to the kind of 30 minute tests that i ran i really ran this for a person on facebook that was considering a rav4 prime and they were wondering if i had most of the devices on um, how long the rav4 prime would power it and so i ended up powering uh, both the fridge the AC, uh, two lights, and also the fantastic fan. And over a half an hour time period, I used 0.7 kilowatt hours. Now the RAV4 Prime has an 18.1 kilowatt hour battery. So basically probably 1.5 kilowatt hours is what you would use over the course of one hour. And so you should be able to the RAV4 Prime actually without recharging should be able to run in that mode probably for 12 hours or so. Now what's great about the RAV4 Prime is you can actually recharge the battery um, just in hybrid mode. So with any of the gasoline um, in the tank, you can actually recharge the battery and bring it up to, um, up to almost um, the full 18.1 kilowatt hours, not quite, about 18, 80%. Um, so what we do a lot of times is, you know, we'll use the, um, um, the battery during the day, during the night. And then during the day when we're kind of driving around and checking out sites and hiking and stuff like that, then we'll turn on uh, the recharge mode or the charge mode. And then we recharge our battery. And then the next day uh, we can then use the battery again uh, to charge the, uh, to power the camper. And so that's, that's really cool. Yeah. So one of the things I really love about the RAV4 Prime is just wherever it goes, um, there's a power source for us. And so we almost never play, pay for sure power because we always have our RAV4 Prime with us. Um, so yeah, it's really fantastic. So it's a great companion for your off-grid camping. So I really hope this video helps you kind of understand the electrical systems and the usage in your A-liner camper or any sort of other camper. And I sure did learn a lot just by creating this video. It's really helped me. And so it hopefully it helps you as well. Um, if you do find that you got some value from this video, please like it. YouTube really looks at the likes and the more likes I get, the more likely it is to send this content out to other users. And also consider subscribing because I've got a lot more A-liner content lined up and you don't want to miss any of it. And yeah, I hope to see you again in the next one very soon. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay, I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays.